My name is Davin Sturdivant, and in this Aim Learn Fast video, we will learn about how to read channel reports in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for Aim Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So Roger, I know that Race Studio has some reports that will easily let me show like minimum data and maximum data so I can get a quick reference of what's going on. Can we walk through some of those reports and you can just kind of highlight some of the features that they have? Certainly. The, the, the main report that does a lot of those kind of things, and one that I use uh, virtually every session, is, is called a channels report. And the channels report to me is, 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 a, is a large valuable tool. It's one of those things that you can open up quickly. You, you set it up one time and, we're, and we'll walk through that process, but you set it up one time and then when you open it, you get all this bulk of information very quickly in ways that you can read it very quickly. And sometimes you only have three or four minutes, you know, five minutes to, to get through some quick information. You don't have time to dig in really deeply into the analysis tools. So um, let, let's talk about channel reports. And, mm. and, and, and as we do, we always start up, we're just going to open a test, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to open up uh, Mark's heat race here. And uh, I tend to open them up and, and close my data you know, with, a, with just a speed trace on, just to kind of keep it nice and simple to begin with. So the channels report takes the data that you have open, and it's this, it's this little icon right up here. You can hit the Control F4 button to, to get there, or, uh, or just click on that button. You can also get to almost every function that are the icons up here from the view pull-down menu. Hmm. So you can get to the channel report you know, from, that, from that spot as well. So. I'm going to open it up. Now, for all those folks that are watching the video here at home, th this channel's report will will not look like this when you first open it. It may it needs to be set up, right? Mm. Uh, it'll look something like this, but there may be different channels. It may be you know you may have eight or ten channels open. Might now mine only has the GPS speed channel that is giving us values for the minimum and maximum. Mm. Totally user definable. Mm. And the way that you want to do and, the, and once you do it once, it's going to save it and it's always going to open up this, the same way that you last closed it. Mm -hmm. So uh, so in this case we've got. Uh, you know, Mark's heat race open, and it's looking at all of the different laps from Mark's heat race. We've got lap, all of the active laps. Down here across the bottom, we've got our test laps toolbar, and we show that we've got lap two through lap 11. Mm. It's the same laps that you're seeing up here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So right now we're just showing the GPS speed, the minimum speed for each lap, and the maximum speed for each lap on this go-kart data from, uh, from PGP. Uh, and it also gives us a couple of other things that are can be really useful is it gives us the lap times obviously the highlighted one the bolded one here is your fastest lap of the session mm -hmm. and it also gives us the only spot that i've been able to find in the data that is easy to get to it also shows us the the, the distance of rollout of the cart for that lap mm -hmm. from start line back to you know from start finish line back to the start finish line so on lap two the driver did 4250 feet of actual mm -hmm. rollout distance mm -hmm. and you can see here on the best lap 4217 so, uh, and, you, and you, this is one of those things that I do look at as a data guy when I'm looking at different people's data, and you can kind of see how consistent the driver is by watching these numbers. Right. If those numbers are all over the place, that means that, you know, sometimes he went around the top of the, you know, corner, missed the apex by a bunch, because that adds, you know, the traveled number of feet. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this is a, kind of a handy thing to look at. And in this case, if you look at it, the fastest lap actually was uh, is tied for the shortest lap as well. Kind of mm -hmm. interesting. Not always does that happen, but uh, there there is something to be said for that. Hmm. Okay, so let's say we don't want just GPS speed minimum and, and maximum speeds of that for each lap of this track. Uh, we want to add in our longitudinal Gs, you know, minimum max values, how hard you're hitting the brakes and how good the cart's accelerating, lateral Gs, and let's say our cylinder head temp. Hmm. You know, just so we can get a good report to look at in just a minute or two really quickly scan through and see temperatures how well the carts you know driving some trends and some other things so the way that you do that is there's an add and remove button here 
If you click on that add and remove button, you end up with this dialog box, right? Mm -hmm. And what it, 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 when you first look at this, it's a little bit, um, it doesn't make a ton of sense right at first. But once you start to understand how it works, it actually works pretty well. Mm. Right now, we've got GPS. That's the channel that I've, the channel that I've got highlighted. Mm -hmm. These are the, the, the available report objects. Mm. And these are the ones I want to show in the report. And you've got these arrows to move things around. OK, so in on GPS speed, I have told it I only want to see the min and max values for each lap. And that's what's there. Let's go to the next one we want to do. Let's say it's lateral GPS lateral acceleration. So I click on that one. It's not showing anything in the report right now. So we simply have to click on the minimum value because that's what I want to see. Mm -hmm. Minimums are the negative numbers for left hand turn. So I'm going to click on minimum and I could shoot this entire list of data by hitting this large arrow. Mm -hmm. Boom all of that would show up in the report. I really don't want to do that. There's a whole lot of stuff there that means some good things, but it's for, for our report, what we're gonna talk about today, I don't want to. Mm. So I'm gonna hit minimum, and then I'll hit the single right arrow, and boom, minimum's over there. I'm gonna click on maximum, and I'm gonna put it over there. And then the next one I want is longitudinal G, and I'm gonna put in the minimum there, and the maximum. And I want my cylinder head temp, and I'm just gonna put in the, uh, let's put the, let's just put the, uh, Let's put the maximum mm -hmm. and let's put the average just to mm -hmm. show you what it might look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, and we can do that with every channel that you have. We could do battery voltage for, for, for microns that you want to watch that battery voltage to know when you want to charge it. If you're not watching the display mm -hmm. uh, on and on and on, you have a, every channel that's available to you is available to you in this report. Mm -hmm. So when we get that all set up, simply click on the okay button and the report populates the stuff that we were just taking a look at. Right. Okay. okay. So now you can look at this and you, you, we've got the GPS speed we talked about. Now we can look at our cylinder head temps. Our fastest lap is still bolded where we have these blue values. Those are the high values for all of the different columns, right? Right. So 1.91 negative, that's the highest G's we found in the left-hand corners was on lap seven. And, uh, and then on our, on our maximum G's on, and positive numbers, of course, are the right-hand corners because left-handers are negative, right-handers are, are positive. Mm -hmm. So the highest G you hit on the uh, mark here, hit on the, on the right-hand corners was 2.36 G's on the last lap. Mm -hmm. And then on the negative G's, negative 0.86, that's where that was the highest breaking, you know, the quickest it was, it was slowing down. Mm -hmm. On his best lap, it was just 0.49, so half the G's was the peak of his break. He just did mm. some interesting things to look at. Sure, right? sure. So you just kind of scan this and, and, and take a look. A couple, one, one thing that jumps out at me just by looking at this report real quickly, look at the GPS lateral Gs. Now this is the forces left and right of this particular cart. Mark on this one heat race, look at, if you, if you take your eye and scan the, the maximum values, which is the right-hand corners, 2.322223222323 and then a 219 which is basically a 22 and then of course the G's are less when the tires are just coming up to temperature mm -hmm. so you've got all these 2.2s and 3s look at the values on the left hand corners you know uh, and I'm not we're not going to get to the why you know right now but this is something I would be I would begin to study but mm -hmm. you know 1818 one seven nine close to one eight one eight one nine one mm -hmm. yeah all sevens eights and nines right yeah. on the left hand corners yeah. there's a reason for that somewhere in there mm -hmm. I would want to dig in and, and answer that question we always try to answer which is why why right? yeah but you can see trends by looking at a report like this for the entire lap right sure sure and there might be a curb on the right that the driver is banging you know, just at the right time where we always get these spikes or it might be a banked corner one corner that's a mm -hmm. right hand corner that has a bank corner uh, we don't know the why yet but mm -hmm. this certainly is showing a trend that I would want to dig into more, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so that's so we can set this report up, and and from now on, every time we open this report, we're going to see these values. We can add more if we wanted to. We can take some away. Uh, just an interesting thing. One of the, the the cool things is, and this works in many different places inside of the AIM Race Studio analysis software. Right now, we're sorting by lap number. Okay, let's say. That it's more important to you to know and, and, and look at this report based on lap times. You can click on any of these columns across the top, and I'm going to click on the time one. If I click on it once, it sorts them by the fastest lap down to the slowest lap. Mm -hmm. If I click on it again, it goes from slowest lap to so ascending versus descending just mm -hmm. by clicking on this, right? Mm -hmm. You can do that on the distance. Uh, we can do that by the, the, you know, the max value of, of speed. So I can click on it again, and we can have 
our fastest laps at the top, and we can look at three, four, three, four, five, seven. You, know, you can see where the fastest, you know, peak speed of this particular driver was. Um, you know, maximum cylinder head temps, mac, you know, minimum, you know, geez, the the maximum, you know, the, the hardest it ever turned to the left was on lap seven at that point one nine one. So you can sort by these columns above the top, which is right. kind of a handy thing, right? Right, right, right. right. Another thing that you can do that you that you may not know is the, see these little green boxes across the top. Mm -hmm. I can click on that guy, and it gives you a graphical display oh. of of these values. So you can see that the minimum speed on this one lap we're sorting by by uh, by, by a different value. So we could sort by our our lap times. So you can see the speed, the minimum speeds in the corners come up mm -hmm. as it got tired temperature and, and, the, and the driver was getting after it pretty good. So that's kind of a handy little tool as well. Right, right. So pretty interesting stuff. So it, it looks like the general reports really kind of help you identify consistency right off the bat, just like at a glance, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. we're not comparing trace data like we would in other reports. This at least lets me see, oh, this driver is doing something similar every lap. Or if the numbers weren't that way, I could at least say, oh, wow, I'm noticing a big dip randomly. Yeah. Um, like a good example I look at is on longitudinal acceleration, where the mm -hmm. minimum brake distance is super high. Um, mm -hmm. right? Well, I guess it's if it's minimum... Does that mean is that acceleration? If it's yeah, it's negatives are when you're braking. So yeah, and it is acceleration. So it got up to 0.8 g's negative in okay. under braking. So under -braking. bigger is better here. You yeah, know, typically. Yeah. And bigger is better here for the acceleration side. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That that makes sense. That makes sense. So you know, like you can start thinking about it like that. Like okay, I see I see a number that maybe is larger than the other ones. Why is that? You know, because that that right. um, 0.8 might have been let's say a, a panic stop. Right. You or, you know, I had to lock up behind someone and I say I in yeah. the general ter general sense. Right. The yeah. driver had to lock up behind someone or, you know, was just jabbing the brakes for a quick correction. And so you might take that as an outlier and say, right. well, hey, I only saw this once. Um, maybe it's not worth, you know, using as a trend for the rest of my driving. Right. Or Where's the it? or the or the another another thing that this report does that a lot of people don't know about that makes this a pretty handy tool mm -hmm. is let's say that eight six is jumping out at you. It, mm -hmm. it did for you. It did for me, mm -hmm. just like, the, you know, some of these other ones did the, this point one nine one on the negative. But let's say this this uh, longitudinal G's is point eight six. You're going, wow, what happened there? Mm -hmm. Well, there's you, we could look at that and say it's on lap four right mm -hmm. and it's it's the longitudinal g's and so we could come down here go to the majors graph and we could go to lap four and we could turn on longitudinal g's mm -hmm. and we could find that spot remember our, our uh, channel tags we, we have our min and max values mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we could go find that value right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or the other thing that um, let's let's talk about an even better way i'm going to go back to you know right click and we can go to show our best lap, uh, which was lap nine. I'm going to go back to the report channels report. And let's say I want that point one nine one means something to us. Mm -hmm. And we don't know why. Why was it a tenth higher than almost every other one? Right. I want to go look at that one. Yeah. Instead of doing the whole thing we talked about, it's it's on lap seven. These are all hyperlinked. Uh, the averages obviously aren't. You can't click on an average, right? right, right. There's no there's no location in the data. So, so in this case, I'm going to go to this 0.191 minus negative 191 and just double click in the in this report. And what it does is it opens up the measures graph again, and it takes the cursor and it put it right here, right? You see the uh, cursor right yeah. here. And while we only have longitudinal G's and speed up, so I'm going to turn on my lateral G's. And I'm going to turn off my longitudinal G's, and you'll see where that cursor ended up popping into place, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the channel report, I'm jump just jump back there for a moment. All of these values are hyperlinked, so you can jump. It will take you directly back, change laps on you. We're now act lap seven was automatically activated. It changed that and put the cursor right at that channel value That's cool. of what we were looking for. So it's very, very quick. Your eye picked out a couple of things, and so did mine. And so you could go right to that, double click on it. It just jumps you right there. That makes sense. Yeah. That channel may or may not be open. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had to turn on that channel, but the cursor is right where it belongs. Yeah, so. and I think that's actually a good tip to maybe kind of wrap up on is, you know, to make sure that when you look at your channel report and then you look at your measures that they're both activated so you don't get confused and you don't right, click right. on a link and go, oh, I can't find what I was looking yeah. at. Where yeah, like, like when we first when we first looked at it, it was like, okay, well, right there was my lateral. I, well, that didn't make, you know, the longitudinal sense. was on. So yeah, having that turned on helps, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. So that uh, very, very important. So uh, one last thing I would want to show uh, everybody and tape here is the 
we we get a lot of people, especially in carding, that compare data. You know, they'll either have a teammate or they'll they'll want to look at their qualifying versus their 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 heat race. So uh, let's take a look at what a channel report looks like when you open up a second test, and just to give you an idea of what it kind of looks like. So I'm going to open up my test database. I'm going to open up David's lap, David's run here as well, and and take a look at the channel report. And this is, again, this is across the board in AIM. It works very similar for everything. So now I have David and I have that channel report. These are all his values. If you look here, there the rights, the, the maximum on the, on the lateral Gs is higher than the lefts, but it's not nearly as much as with Mark. Mm -hmm. So they, yeah, they're, they're a little bit higher on the rights than the lefts, but quite a bit, uh, not, not nearly the difference as we had in Mark's, but mm -hmm. there's the cylinder head temps. We can look at just David up here across the top with you have these tabs we can look at just mark like we were looking at a minute ago mm. but almost every report that we do you have the ability to not only look at one or the other but compare the two mm. so now if you're te if if we've got two teammates here and we're looking at each other's data you can take a look at all of your lateral g's side by side right in front of you in one report ah. for both cars or both sessions or both laps or however okay. it is that you want to look at the data it's kind of handy yeah and it tells you exactly which you know who you know mark stuff is the upper half one here and david's is the bottom half yeah all of the same things we talked about a minute ago you can sort you know there's i just sorted both of them on it doesn't it keeps them separated into sessions but you can right. so, sort all of uh all of, all of Mark's data by lap times and and, and uh, David's data as well. So pretty pretty handy tool. Always remember that you can look at, on almost every report, you can look at individual driver, individual driver, or stack them on top of each other, which no, is pretty handy. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I think when you're comparing two drivers together, you know, one quick thing you can think about too is if you're starting to have setup discussions, right? Because David in this data is faster than Mark. And so we could look at something, let's say like lateral G, and start talking about, you know, if, if driving line is the same, but lateral G is lower than the other, maybe it's a tire temperature thing, or maybe it's an alignment thing, or, you know, you could start to dig into the whys a little bit by comparison right. to say, you know, it looks like David is carrying five tenths of a G more through the corner, you know, and he's about a pretty consistently, pretty consistently. Yeah. And he's about a second, a lap faster, give us some change. Right. Yep. So we can start having some discussions about, you know, where is he faster or, you know, if given if the setups of the carts are the same, right, if alignment is the same and the driver is the same, you know, where can we start to figure out those variables? Right. So. It's, it's like every other tool in the data analysis software. This is just just a tool to keep you working and to dig down to finally get to that one thing that we're always after, which is the why. So that's the end of this AIM Learn Fast video. Please feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments below or get a hold of us on social media. We're using the best questions to come out with new videos, which we're trying to release every Tuesday. Visit aimsports.com if you'd like to review other Micron products.